Hello, my name is Justin Arnott. I'm the Science and Operations Officer here at the National Weather Service Office in Gaylord, Michigan. And today we're going to do a demonstration of the ESTF satellite procedure. Um, kind of a way to get your zero hour sky grids in order um, and uh, um, a nice way to update your grids for the current hour. Just as a um, for the sake of demonstration here, let's take a quick look at what's going on over in northern Michigan today okay, so you can kind of see what to expect in terms of satellite. We have mid and high clouds, um, actually even some lower clouds now, now overspreading northern Michigan as a clipper system moves through the region. So you can kind of see that there. If we look over to the visible imagery, notice that that is just coming in um, as it is, um, you know, quarter past nine in the morning eastern time. Um, so we're just starting to get some our first few visible shots of the day. So, the ESTF satellite procedure obviously needs to be used on grids that are from the current hour to hours previous. Um, you obviously need satellite data for it. Um, so if you run it in the future, you will get, you will get an error. So let's uh, select here an hour just before, pre, uh, right now. Go up to ESTF satellite under the populate menu here. And you see a series of uh, um, different inputs that you can, uh, for uh, having the... Uh, the tool run. Basically your source for sky, this is basically going to try to generate a sky grid out of the clouds from visible and IR, or IR actually that is. <coughs> and so you can choose whether you want the visible or IR channel. Let's go to IR for now for uh, my purposes just because uh, the visible imagery like I said is just, just starting for the day. Um, you can set brightness or temperature to clear cloudy based on whether you're looking at visible or IR imagery. So you can basically say what temperatures in the IR would you like cloudy skies. Um, and uh, you can also um, make use of your surface temperature grid from, your, from GFE um, if you would like to uh, uh, use that for clear as well. Um, obviously there are times in which uh, you, know, you can confuse ground temperatures for cloud temperatures and so you can help uh, um, incorporate that here. Um, we can also, if we were to uh, do this, um, we need to enter a temperature difference between um, clear skies and cloudy skies in Celsius um, to help um, try to make use of that surface as the bound for clear skies and then let temperatures go down from there. Um, you also have a smoothing option with a factor. How much would you like those cl cloudy uh, or those sky grids smoothed after we're done? Because you will see they will be a little pixely. Um, and uh, would you like the uh, time range to um, be forced to one hour back on sky um, just to make sure you're grabbing some recent data. So if you pick the current hour and it may be only a couple minutes past the hour, the hour you haven't gotten an image in, you can say yes there uh, to force the time range to um, make sure to grab that previous hour just in case you might be, uh, you might be requesting data that isn't quite there yet. So let's just run with the default here at the moment. And you'll see it basically clouds things over pretty much totally, which if you were to look at our, back to our um, IR imagery, that's actually probably not a huge problem. We zoom in here, we've got brightness temperatures on the order of minus 25 to minus 40 Celsius. And so basically area-wide, at least high clouds have spread over. So obviously you will have those always those issues of whether high clouds are opaque enough to call cloudy and whatnot. Um, and that's really up to you um, as to how you handle that. But this will give you a first guess. This would say it's cloudy everywhere. And clearly, if we were to take this and... Um, say we wanted to uh, cool the whole thing down to make it a little less cloudy if we took this down to 10 degrees and say minus 20 um, you're gonna notice um, in this case oh let me make sure I select IR first that's why we got something weird there you see the image is a little less cloudy looking for those few areas that are a little bit warmer in the image um, allowing those to come through as mostly cloudy notice also when we go back to that visible what happened there I showed that briefly, very pretty much clear because the brightness temperatures haven't gotten bright enough yet um, to really make use of the visible imagery yet. So for example, if we were to take a look at what the brightness temperatures are, they're in the order, the brightness values in the order of 50 to 60, maybe 70, as high as 70. Um, we look in here, they are just barely getting above the 65 threshold for clear. You know, So if, for example, if we took this down a sizable amount, may say 30, and ran it again, um, it would cloud things up more. Um, and obviously, you, 
if you were going to try to make use of visible imagery at this time of day, you would you'd have to basically create a baseline for what you wanted to be clear or cloudy um, based on what you saw in the visible image. Clearly in this case, even what I chose here was still far too clear um, for what's going on. Um, so uh, that's basically how the tool works. Notice how it smoothed it after we were done. If we go back and uh, you know smooth increase this smooth factor you're going to notice more of those you know pixelated um, areas go away and you get a much more smooth image so again this is a good way to kind of give you a first guess as to your sky grid sometimes you're in there you know with the pencil tool trying to draw on this feature and that um, and that's really not the goal of the ESTF um, it, the goal is it, to have tools that will help you get a good first guess um, and then smooths it reasonably so that you're not trying to you know obviously chase every cumulus cloud out there um, but also uh, kind of set things up so that you have a good sky grid going forward into your forecast. Now you can reinterpolate this into your previous forecast um, if, the, if the forecast looks reasonable and you have a good you know zero hour leading in that leads into your uh, your previous forecast. So thanks for listening.